Welcome to Beauty and the Brain with your hosts, Dr. Chris Crowley and nurse practitioner Jerry Drinker. Get ready to dive into the latest in revolutionary treatments, cutting edge devices, and wellness secrets. Whether you're a consumer or provider, we're here to empower you at the forefront of beauty and aesthetics. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Brain, the podcast where we discuss all things aesthetics. I'm your co-host, Dr. Chris Crowley. And I'm Jerry Drinker, family nurse practitioner. And together, Chris and I own Skin and Tonic, a med spa located in Pace, Florida. And today, before we dive into our topic of, of celebrity and aesthetic treatments that they get, I just want to talk a little bit about like what we have coming up and what it goes into make this podcast happen. We have Sierra and Danny, who's like, we can't even say how much they help make everything happen, but also just to juggle our schedules to over the next several months and over the past several months, we have so much education and on both sides of the podium, like, you know, Chris does tons of presentations and, and education. We both are instructors with Empire Medical Training. Chris is KOL for several different companies as well. And then on top of that, like all the travel that he has. And so he has his handy dandy llama calendar here that he kind of lives by and it looks so simple and then you open it up and it's one of those things and like i don't know how he just texts me and tells me where he's gonna be you know there's there's just so much that that goes into this and so i do want to encourage every single person that whether you're an injector that's just starting an injector we've been at this for 16 years and we still continue to invest in our education and we do it for our patients. That's the the whole purpose. Never stop learning, never um never like set limits on yourself and kind of do like Chris and live by the llama. Let him tell you a little bit about his calendar and what he's got coming up. They all make fun of me about my calendar, but I love this llama calendar. It was 99 cent at the dollar store. So if you guys are um, wondering what I love by, uh, you can actually see my pretty llama calendar if you go look at our YouTube version of this podcast. But but seriously, there, there's a lot of scheduling that goes on behind the scenes, not just for the podcast, but for all things we do. And uh, we really both do enjoy uh, continually learning. And so we have a busy travel schedule going to conferences, learning more that we can bring back and share with our patients and things we can bro- provide in the practice. And also a lot of teaching events coming up. So we'll put some dates down below if any of you guys are interested. So especially for all the injectors out there that we're getting a lot of messages from about where we're going to be um, at upcoming courses, where we're going to be lecturing, teaching, and, and just attending. And, um, you know, I can just name a few of those over the next couple of months. Um, We will be, um, I'll be next week, uh, just this coming up, um, I'm going to be in Naples. And then um, I'll be at a a aesthetic meeting in Miami next week. Jerry's uh, hopefully going to be able to join me towards the end of the weekend. I'm going to be teaching in Naples. And uh, in Miami, I'm doing one lecture on um, an energy-based device, the Plexor that we have. Um, But we're also going to be attending a lot of classes. It's a, you know, a weekend packed with aesthetic education. Uh, we're going to be um, attending multiple Empire classes that I'll be uh, teaching over the next few months. We're doing a cadaver class in New York. Um, that's going to be super, super exciting. It's where a bunch of aesthetic injectors come together and we um, use cadaver specimens. And, and thankfully, people uh, donate for, for science, science. And so we're able to use these to really teach injectors where they um, should be injecting some of these products. So it really in, improves the safety margin and their injection ability. We're doing that in New York coming up in March. Then we're going to be out in uh, Vegas at the beginning of uh, April. There's the American uh, Med Spa Association, or AMSPA. I'll be presenting there, and we'll be attending a bunch of classes there ourselves, as well as kind of a whole host of things over the summer, maybe a trip a uh, couple of days to London. It's a uh, short trip, but there's a great aesthetic meeting going on over there, as well as multiple Empire classes. So stay tuned. We'll keep you posted as to where we're going to be. Most uh, exciting for me, but not so much for Jerry, I don't think. Um, you know what I'm going to say. I know. What you, what you, where are you going? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be filming um, on a reality show at the end of March. It's uh, probably not going to be released till a little bit later in the, the year, but it's a, a reality show. Um, it, it's called The Blocks, and we're going to be, it's a, a kind of a business show uh, meets a reality uh, TV. So it, it's really um 
a bunch of entrepreneurs. So different businesses, not just medical, it's, it's from all different industries and you're going to be, uh, you know, kind of competing with each other. And I didn't even tell Jerry that I had applied to do this until pretty far in the process. Yeah, I, it was one of those things. I didn't really know that, like once he mentioned it to me, I didn't realize how far in the process he had gotten. And so I didn't think it was a real possibility. Like I love Chris, but I really didn't know if he was reality show material. So it's one of those things I was like, is he, is he really going through with this? And then all of a sudden he said, well, it's going to be for both of us. And so kind of got drug into it. I'm a little more camera shy than, than Chris is, but he has like such a competitive nature. You just wouldn't absolutely not believe it. It will be fun. Um, we'll be filming in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, um, that starts in, in, in the March, we're going to be doing that. And, um, you know, I always say that I look forward to it and I'm, I'm glad it will be fun. It'll be fun. And Jerry's going along because definitely if you guys see a lot of our uh, catchy names, our marketing ideas, uh, much of that is uh, born from Jerry's mind. So he is super creative, way more so than I am, actually. Um, and I'm usually the one that's saying, no, 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 no let's dial it back. But um, and now he wants to put me on national television. Now I want to put him on TV. Yeah. But it, I love his ideas. They're great. I'm just a little bit more reserved. But he also doesn't like being in front of the camera as much. So I actually think that we'll be a great team. And I think it'll be a lot of fun kind of um, sharing some of our ideas and hopefully um, winning this competition because I'm, I'm certainly not going in it uh, shooting for anything less. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, so he, we're going to do it. Let's do it. I told him he better be studying. Get ready. Yeah. So let's jump into the fun topics for today. We're going to talk about aesthetic secrets of the stars and, and kind of what we're talking about, I guess it's not a secret because the, the ones we're going to talk about at least are celebrities um, who have admitted to some of their um, aesthetic work. And so all we know is what they've admitted to. So we don't necessarily know if there's other things involved or not. But a lot of people that we're going to be um, discussing today on the podcast they're absolutely, you know, amazing, beautiful skin, beautiful features. And it's something that I think a lot of us would love to age in the manner that, that we're seeing some of these. Now, of course, we can all give examples of people who have been overdone, over exaggerated. And really, um, I, I think most of you guys know us by now, and, and we're definitely um, much more positive, upbeat. So I don't, the goal of this, if you're hoping to listen and, and hear, hear us tear people apart, we're certainly not going to do that. We're going to talk about people that we absolutely love and that we think are beautiful and that we want to age like they i think also the other thing that um the, the the celebrities that we're talking about these are aesthetic treatments they're not necessarily surgical treatment and um you know there are a couple of them that you can question whether or not surgery was involved but they've been very open about like the um the aesthetic treatments and so one of the ones that's been around for for a long time and she um she, at, one, at one point, she was overfilled, and it, she was very open about that. And since has had some reversal, and his um is Courtney Cox. And so, um, what are your thoughts on on Courtney? I mean, I, again, I think she's beautiful. Uh, there definitely are, uh, you know, at, at times where um, I prefer a more natural look, but I think she looks gorgeous now. Um, I think most recently I was reading about a, a laser treatment that. Um, she was talking about uh, having done. And really, I think the, the testament to that particular procedure is similar to, to lasers we have in our office is the skin glow, the skin quality. You know, it doesn't look like she has a single, um, you know, pigmented area on her face. It just has a nice, smooth, even appearance with a nice glow to it. So I say go, Courtney, like whatever she's doing, doing is, seems to be working for her now. And I do think it it kind of goes back. We've mentioned it on a few of the previous episodes about how the trend is to go for a more natural look than what it was, you know, eight or 10 years ago. People don't want the overfilled faces. And, and she was open about that and is absolutely beautiful now. So well, I know the one that you've been most excited to talk about, and you, you not only told me before you even talked about doing this episode, you were telling me about something you just saw with Martha Stewart. Ugh. I mean, it's, it just amazes me It's that, you know, she's 82 years old and that she has been through all sorts of stuff, you know, um, and is one of the most beautiful people, I think. She's always reminded me of my Aunt Sue, so maybe that's part of why I'm such a fan. Um, 
And I also think it's pretty cool that you can go to prison, hang out with Snoop, smoke weed, and come out looking like a million bucks. So maybe that's what we all need to do. Take a little break in the pokey and smoke some weed with Snoop and come out looking like Martha. <laughs> But, she, you know, she's been very open. She has a podcast. If you guys haven't listened to it, like her podcast is really good. And she interviews her dermatologist. And the funny thing about it is that she couldn't tell you the name of a lot of the treatments that she had. But she could tell you what she wa- what she wanted and what she didn't want. And so um, she's very, really open about having neurotoxin in the past. I think Botox is what she said that she had had. And she didn't like that. She didn't like the heaviness that she got on her brow. So she doesn't do any like neurotoxin on her of her face. But she kept telling him, she's like, I really like that stuff that you injected into my cheeks. And so, um, and he goes in and talks a little bit about um, hyaluronic acid fillers and how that works. But my favorite part of it was when he started telling her about Sculptra. And, you know, we use a ton of sculpture at the clinic and both of us are huge fans. And he goes into talking about how it's a biostimulant and how it works so well. Um, I think she's had some radius as well, like on her jawline, I believe is what he had said. But um, talked about those two biostimulants and how they're different. And so um, the other thing that they were very open about was the lasers that she's had. Um, She's, I think, most proud of her decollete, which I found to be like just entertaining as crap at 82. Yeah, well, she was just on a cover of um, Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated. Like she was a swimsuit model on Sports Illustrated cover. Yeah. And at, at, at 80 something, I don't know if she was 80 or 81 at the time she did the shoot, but she looked absolutely amazing, and including her decollete. Yeah, including her decollete. And, you know, we look at those and you wonder, I'm sure there's certainly retouched photos. None of us would be on the cover of a magazine without them. Um, but, you know, there are certainly retouched photos. But just recently we saw this, the Super Bowl and there was a, a pan to her on the Super Bowl and she is just absolutely beautiful. You know, she's unfiltered sitting there watching the game. She's all smiles. She's poised. So, yes, I'm a, I'm a fan. Clearly. So, I'll stop. I haven't heard. Stop talking. I haven't heard her podcast, but now you make me want to go listen to the podcast. Yeah, you have to listen. She, um, there are a lot of layers to Martha. Certainly, I think there's a lot of layers to all of us, right? I think so. And and there's the public persona, and I think over time we've seen a different side of her. I think that was definitely an image that she kind of crafted. um, Was careful to control what she put to the public. Some of that was shattered a bit with some of the, the you know legal issues that she had. But if anybody, she shows you like resilience, um, you know, she did exactly, she did the time. Um, and, and when she came out, she came out stronger than ever and, and totally rebuilt. And so I think that's a, a message for all of us that, you know, life doesn't always go exactly like we planned, um, but you keep moving forward. And, and like you said, she looks happier than ever now and, and looks can be deceiving. We all know that, uh, but at least from all external, you know, viewpoints that she looks like she's she's rocking it right now yeah i think when you see someone in a a prison outfit i don't know are they called outfits jumpsuit uniform uniform costume when you see someone in in that it really strips them down and so it it makes them you know it it gives a real quality to them. Mm-hmm. And so I think from that's probably when I, I started paying probably more attention when she went to prison than when she had a successful TV show. And um, that's just the, the part of me that found that part of her just real. And, you know, uh, like I love humility and I love the fact of what kind of businesswoman she is. And like you said, she she is like she's back. Yeah. I, you know, I did see something with her and um I don't even know, maybe it's on an airplane or something, but I love the way that she runs her business, right? So she she treats, at least from what we saw on the show, treats her employees with respect, but she's firm. She has high expectations, and everybody that works for her understands her expectations are high. So it's not that that she's being unreasonable. It's like, if you're going to be here and be part of this team, here's what, what we expect to perform at this level. But then she also, like I said, it's not, it is... I guess, demanding, but respectful at the same time f- from at least, you know, again, what we see on the TV show. And I think a lot of them been with her for many years, maybe their entire career. Some of them are leaving after like, you know, 20, 30 years with her. So, you know, when you, you see in uh, a record of people being that long, it shows how you treat people. 
Um, anyway, this is not a, a show about Martha Stewart, although it turned into it. It did turn into This it. was about the, the way that Martha Stewart looks at 82 and what she does to maintain that look. And I think, you know, to your point, uh, sculpture is a, is a key or a cornerstone of that. And you know how much I love biostimulants. We talk about sculpture. Somebody pointed out how many episodes I talked about it last season because I absolutely love it. And if, it, you know, I was stranded on a desert island, it is the one product I would want to take with me. So forget the neurotoxins, forget the HA filler sculpture. You'll take it with you because you got about 30 vials in your butt. No, 40. <laughs> 40. Um, 40. Sorry. Yes. So you'll so, be taking it with you. Anybody who didn't know that. So speaking of butts and sculpture, yeah. what about Kim Kardashian? I don't know if she has sculpture in her butt. I don't know what she has yeah. in her butt. She, like, she came out and said that she had sculpture butt. Oh, okay. Right. I did not know that. Yeah. We both look at Sierra. So for those of you watching this on the YouTube channel, like we looked over at Sierra to verify that that is yeah. what she said. Yeah, we want Sierra to amen what we say. So, um, but yeah, she um, she's openly said that she had sculpture butt. Yeah. I wonder how many vials she had. Yeah. I mean, so so for, again, we're going to have this on an upcoming episode. Um, we're going to have uh, Maritza Mejia. So um, she is one of my um, best friends, uh, pretty... Um, uh, famous and very, very successful um, entrepreneur, nurse, uh, practitioner in New York. Her uh, social media is Injectables uh, by Maritza, so you guys go uh, check her out. But um, she was kind enough to do sculpture, uh, sculpture butt lift for me. So Jerry didn't want me to, you know, basically uh, waste that much sculpture. He thought, why are we going to waste that much? We should sell it in the clinic. And I wanted, uh, you know, I'm almost uh, right at 50 and my butt wasn't what it used to be. I didn't want to go to the gym. So she um, injected 20 vials in my butt in November, another 20 in December. So we've been a couple of months now. It takes a little bit of time to see the results. And, and so definitely I haven't seen like a huge increase in size. She but, also had a 20 pound weight loss. Right. And so I haven't seen it decrease in size right. with the weight loss. And again, thanks to Maritza for doing that and, you know, Jerry didn't complain too much about it because he didn't have to deal with me uh, doing it. And so, and you do these in the clinic quite a bit. But my point is with 40 vials, I don't see a huge change in the size. And it may, it may be a little bit early. We need to wait probably another month or two. Um, but we know Kim has a big booty. So I wonder how many vials it took. If that's all, you know. If that's the only thing that's been used there, that's a lot of sculpture. Yeah. Somehow I think it's probably not, but I don't know that for sure. It's probably a combination with other things. But the biostimulant, so whether it's in it's Sculptra or maybe even Radius, but whether it's um, uses a biostimulant in your butt, your face, your hands, your arms, uh, we know that it's a, it gives the skin a really nice glow to it. So I love that as part of healthy aging. And, and talking about the Kardashians, another um, one that we were going to discuss is um, actually Kris Jenner, her mom. And uh, I think she's openly talked about some of her hand treatments and getting uh, Radius. So it's another biostimulant that we can use as a filler. So to not only you know, hide some of the veins and tendons that we show in your hands as you get older, but um, really to kind of smooth out some of that uneven pigmentation um, and really just give it a more youthful appearance. Biostimulants, uh, like they've they've been pretty popular over the, the past few years and they're just gaining momentum over the the next few years. I, I really think that's where our industry's headed. You know, HA will always have its place and we'll always use it. And for HA, um, again, we're using abbreviations. So we have injectors, but we have... <laughs> um, I'm sorry. So HA is our is, is hyaluronic acid filler. And those are the, the most common are your Restylane line of products, Juvaline, Juvederm line of products. So when we refer to HA fillers, that's that's what I'm, I'm talking about. So... Um, those are the fillers you see an immediate result. It fixes, um, corrects a deficit where the um, biostimulants actually encourage the body to produce collagen. I think there's a lot of options in aesthetics. And when we see these celebrities, you know, all of us have certain ones that we, we look at and we look up to and we think they look great. Um, I think it's important to find um, an experienced aesthetic injector. So whether it's a you know physician, a nurse, nurse practitioner, uh, depending on where you live, um, it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning of this show. Make sure that they're getting ongoing regular education. It should be part of their yearly. They should be getting some sort of education. We're 16 years into this business now, and both of us still are attending multiple uh, conferences and lectures and trying to stay up to date on the literature to provide the safest care with the you know most optimal outcomes. And so we know that uh, when you see these celebrities that you kind of look up to and you love their look, discuss it with your aesthetic injector. Some of it can be realistic for you and others. 
you know, maybe not. Maybe it's something that's not for you and your individual situation or realistic objective. So I think he is finding somebody who is experienced in your area that can guide you through that and tell you if you can get the Martha Stewart look or not. Right. Is that what you're aiming for? That's what I'm aiming for. So I need to go check out all Martha's treatments and sign me up. Sign you up this week. Yep. I uh, need my decollete fixed. Okay. He does that. You are going to get sculpture this week, right? I am. I'm getting sculpture this week. It's been a while. Chris probably doesn't look forward to that either for me, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm past due. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in again for another episode of beauty in the brain. We look forward to talking to you again next week. See you soon.